There are still calls for more accountability from the Ford government after a staffer named in the Greenbelt controversy resigns. The announcement came yesterday in a statement from Premier Doug Ford's office saying the Premier's office has accepted Ryan Amato's resignation as Chief of Staff to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing effective immediately, but offered no further explanation. Well, the move comes amid fallout from the Auditor General's Greenbelt report that found the process was biased and favoured developers with access to Housing Minister Steve Clark's Chief of Staff. Amato was the staffer primarily responsible for choosing which sites on the Greenbelt would be opened up for development. Well, for more on this, we are joined live by Provincial Opposition Leader Mart Stiles. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, obviously, this has been a very controversial topic for, uh, for a while now. I'm curious, what do you make of the timing uh, of this resignation? Well, it, I would say, first of all, it's about time. Uh, we've been calling um, for action from the government for weeks now since the Auditor General's report first came out. Uh, this is really the very least we should expect uh, from the government is the resignation of this chief of staff. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, it's still not really meeting our demands. Uh, the buck stops, yes, with the premier. Uh, we need to see action from the premier and we need to see a resignation from this minister. Uh, he should have resigned immediately. Uh, so we're continuing to call for his resignation and also for the premier to recall the legislature so we can actually roll back uh, the, the changes to the green belt. And also, what do you make of the fact that the OPP has now handed over some information to the RCMP? Uh, they're going to be assessing this situation. What are, you, what are you expecting from this? Well, I mean, I, I know the OPP was looking at whether or not to investigate. If they feel conflicted in this situation, then I'm glad that they're passing it along to the RCMP. Uh, the Auditor General's report clearly shows, you know, one of the greatest breaches of trust that we've seen in Ontario's history. Uh, I don't use words like corruption lightly. Uh, and I think it's really important that the RCMP is considering investigating. Do you think it's believable that uh, Minister Clark just wasn't aware of a lot of the details that his uh, chief of staff, who is uh, a fairly young staffer and relatively, you know, hasn't been in, the, in uh, politics for uh, a long time, that he, he didn't know about these particular plans? No, I think it defies belief. Um, I, I've worked in politics and government for on and off for 30 years, and I've been speaking to many others who've been in similar roles uh, uh, to this chief of staff um, uh, over the last few weeks. Uh, there's no question. No one believes this. Uh, the the minister need, had to know what was going on, I would say. Uh, I would say that the premier's office probably had some sense of what was happening, and maybe the premier himself. And, and you know, if they want to, you know, stop us from ask, asking all these questions, they could clear things up. They need to make all of those emails and all of those public phone, those uh, private phone records available uh, to the public, to journalists, to the opposition, so that we can actually get to the bottom of this. And, you know, for, for the most part, you know, many critics like yourself and, and other opposition critics have been asking very reasonable questions. I think a lot of people just really want to know is why do, why would so, a few of these, you know, select developers purchase, you know, nearly $100 million worth of land that was zoned, uh, that was not zoned for development, and then we later it's all of a sudden it's That's available right. for, for building I mean these are reasonable questions that uh, I think a lot of Ontarians want answered absolutely and the Auditor General you know was very clear about this uh, envelopes were passed over to the chief of staff at, at dinners uh, USB keys were shared with plans I mean they basically served up to the government uh, the land that they needed and the government went ahead with it and they changed policy and regulation and laws to allow this to happen so that a few very well connected conservative insiders would benefit to the tune of 8.3 billion dollars. This is not small potatoes. And you know what I'm hearing from Ontarians all across this province is uh, that they are lo they've lost trust in this government. Uh, we deserve and they deserve a government with integrity. Uh, and he's going to be truly transparent and accountable. Barstyles, we appreciate you coming into the studio today. Thanks Thank for joining us. Thank you very us. much. Appreciate it.